How's it going, people? Simon Slap you, and this is Monday's update. It's December, so you've got the BTS plus all the updates and patch notes and a bunch of other things. Honestly, there's quite a lot coming this month, gonna be honest. So, starting straight off the bat, you have the new Elven TAS set. That'll be a thing. So, this is the Tyrannan TAS set. There's 54 TAS all together, and it's literally everything in the Elf lands, as you'd probably expect. The reward is a Tyrannan Quiver, a brand new ammo slot item that's useful for all combat styles. Apparently there's also a new mushroom patch, improvements for your crystal bow and shield, and the top 4 rewards chosen by you in our recent poll, teleports, increased damage versus dark beast, hunter improvements, and trap immunity. So yeah, quite a few nice things from the Elven Tar set by the looks. The next thing worth talking about is the Dominion Tower, so this is going a fairly large-ish update. They're going to be adding a lot of the bosses that were added in the past couple of years to RuneScape. So it's the stuff from the latest Dwarf Quest, uh, the boss from the Vampires, and a bunch of other things like Char and things like that. So loads more bosses will be added to it. They've also added in a Rumble mode, which allows, I think it's up to five players to go in together to take on like massive waves of bosses. And all of this is like new power-ups and stuff and Dominion Factor and rewards in the tower and things like that. So all in all, Seems pretty good. There's also now three different types of dread nips to use: an extreme Dominion medallion, updated XP rewards, and new titles, all from DT. Once this update goes out, so yeah, quite a few things. So it is December, and that means the Premier Club is going to be coming back. So this thing is: uh, you've got a bronze, a silver, and a gold version of the Premier Club. The gold one is going to be 12 months worth of membership plus a bunch of other things. The silver will be. I think six months or something like that, plus a few things, and then the other one is like three months and a minimal amount of things. I'll go into this in a little bit. So next is the week, uh, the winter weekends all throughout December. Uh, the weekends are going to have uh, nice little bonuses for you. So for the first weekend, there's going to be the skilling uh, weekend. This will basically mean you get best uh, rewards from artisans, things like that, maybe a little bit of extra XP, these kind of things. Uh, the next one after that, I do believe, is going to be Castle Wars and Pest Control, so it's the mini game. So you get double for all your rewards in pretty much all mini games, plus ports, get more voyages and things like that. Uh, the third week is going to be a Dungeon Ewan weekend. This will give you bonus XP for all of your runs in DG, plus it's going to reduce the cost of items and things within the shop itself. So that could be interesting. And last but not least, on the last week of December is going to be the Boss and Slayer Weekend, and this will be double drops on a wide range of bosses and increased Slayer XP. So yeah, we don't have lists of every single individual thing that's going to be affected by these stuff, but when the weekends come around, I'm sure there will be. So there we go. Additionally, because it is December, the Festive Aura, everyone will receive it if you don't have it already, and if you do, that'll be coming back for you, and this will give you double XP for half an hour a day. And it's every day throughout the entirety of December. So yeah, some nice chunky XP gains. You've also got the Christmas event. The event, yeah. And, well, it's a Christmas event. There's a bunch of stuff you can get from it. Uh, there's going to be some XP for, like, summoning and things like that. Uh, top of that, you can get some pretty little items, like a full snowman outfit, snowboard, that kind of thing. So yeah, there we go. It is the Christmas event. So I guess go into that in a bit as well. Uh, Treasure Hunter and Solomon's Store. Treasure Hunter is bringing you some special Christmas tradable rares. So if you like collecting the tradable rares, then that's a thing. All through your Treasure Hunter, there'll also be stocking fillers aplenty in Solomon's Store too, including the most requested Barrows Retro Armor. Which would be interesting to see. Kind of like um the old Retro Barrows. But yeah, those are the main updates for your BTS coming up this month. Happy days. So moving on to the next one, you've got Oxfam Unwrapped. So this is going to be the... What the hell's it called? I can't remember. It's the um, charity event thing anyway for Christmas. So you can find a bloke named Thorvar Critter Smash near the Lumbridge, Edgeville, Berthorpe with Prithinus Lodestones, and you can trade in bonds and you'll send them to Oxfam. So in return for your donations for the first one, Thorvar will give you a present containing a very special bauble. Use the bauble to reset your festive aura once every weekend day throughout December. So on your weekends, that'll give you an hour worth of double XP if you trade him a bond and you use this bauble. If you trade two bonds, you'll also gain five treasure hunter keys on top of it. If you trade three, you'll unlock the festive title as well as the other two. 
Four will give you another five treasure hunter keys. So that's ten treasure hunter keys, a bauble which resets your festival, and the title, the festive. And the fifth one will give you a reindeer antler cosmetic head override. So along with each of these presents, you'll receive a second blue present. This gift can only be opened once traded, so pass it on to a friend to spread Christmas cheer, and they'll find two treasure hunter keys inside. So there we go. So that is the charity event for Christmas. Moving on to the Premier Club into a bit more detail. So you can get a big old discount on your membership of up to 25% off for a 12-month gold level, plus a bollock ton of loyalty points and cosmetic overrides and a bunch of other things, same as usual. So if you pay for any Premier Club membership package through PayPal to get hold of the spectacular Samurai outfit and the Kirin pet. So you can all sam it up. Happy days. So here's what the gold membership gets you. So this is giving you 12 months worth of membership. It'll also give you 150k loyalty points, a Dwarven Instinct Aura which will uncover chests when you're killing or skilling, a Lava Hood and Wings cosmetic override which does look quite funky. The wings do. I quite like them. Onyx and grey skin colour options, plus one treasure hunter key per day for three in total, Lava Hawk pet, access to VIP worlds and forums, exclusive chat and forum badges, gold premier club Q&As with developers, Samurai Armour cosmetic override set only if you pay through PayPal, and it's the same with the Kirin pet, only if you pay through PayPal. So there we go. So if I go to this, hopefully I can tell you what is in the bronze and silver. So here we go. So your bronze is 3 months membership plus 20k bonus loyalty points. Uh, you'll also gain the Lava Hood and the Aura Dwarven Instinct. So you activate the Aura for an hour a day and find hidden chests on your adventures whilst you're stabbing stuff in the face and whatnot. Additionally, also if you pay PayPal or any of these, you will gain the Salmon Kirin Outfit, but whatever. Moving on to the silver, this will get you 6 months Millbleship, uh, 50k loyalty points, the Lava Hood, the Dwarven Instinct, and the additional Treasure Hunter Keep a Day, plus the grey skin colour. So there we go. Those are the three options for you. So gold, silver, bronze. Just for the prices, the gold is £52.50, the silver is £27.50, and the bronze is £14.50. So yeah, that's the thing. So last but not least, we have the epic patch note to Doom, as it is Monday. So, you know, patch notes and all that. First of December. Ooh. Christmas coming, people. Christmas. There's quite a few patches, gotta be honest. So starting off then, we got the graphical stuff. Ariana now has the correct chat head during the Heart of Stone quest. The drawers in the Witch's House will no longer change colour when opened. Several wall-mounted candles have been moved upstairs in the Varag East Bank. Several wall-mounted swords and shields have been moved closer to the wall in the Varrock Castle's courtyard. A rogue black square hanging around the Alcarid Palace has also been removed. A stretching issue with the Crown of Loldy three years have been resolved. A palm tree on Abatol is no longer split in two and floating. That's probably a good thing. A one-sided window has been removed from the player and port's workshop. Fix some bloom issues on water and the strange device found during Nomad's Requiem. A graphical issue has been corrected in the Elemental Workshop, some minor clipping in Gudrick's house has been fixed, Apprentice Clara's stretching issues have been addressed, and a small graphical issue with a tree stump has been fixed near the Underground Pass. So moving on, you've got the skills and DD's minigames. Barrows and Shadow Dies will now be broadcast to friends when won from a treasure trail. The Subdue All Order Maidens ability in Gothixian Caches will now award points. An additional S in a certain anagram clue has been moved. Moving on to your quests and achievements, several typos in the Heart of Stone has been fixed. Additional feedback now displays on the Tracker Puzzle during the Heart of Stone. Kipple will now speak to players if they return to the Wizard's Tower. Dialogue has been added to inform players of where they can find Kipple during the Heart of Stone. Kipple is no longer able to forage for items. It is no longer possible to speak to the other instances of Kipple during the Heart of Stone quest. Leela can once again be found above the Drainer prison after a defense skill reset. The getaway boat in Stolen Hearts will no longer sail through the cliffside. <laughs> the combat level of Earth Elementals in Elemental Workshop 3's quest journal has been corrected. Updated the Merlin Crystal quest start journal to reflect recent changes to the combat level calculation. The Cultist Combat Level in the Hazeel Cult Quest journal has been corrected. 
The grand candle achievement will no longer complete if the player attempts to buy a candle but fails due to a lack of money. In the candle like one be that's impressive. Uh, tin ore is no longer counts towards the basic mining challenge to mine copper ore. And moving on to the miscellaneous, the disruption shield spell now shares the same effect in PVM situations. That's quite nice. Players who completed the Thanksgiving 2014 event can now use the Turkey Herald Herald Cape Herald. Okay, no, come on, son. Goliath gloves now have a base accuracy value of 1694 and are correctly counted as a two-handed weapon for the strength value. The voice of seven stones in the Max Guild now update correctly. The tick box in to load the Beast of Burden presets alongside your bank presets is now unchecked by default. Pickaxes and hatchets had their accuracy improved to match that of its tier. Their strength remains unchanged, however. The healing values of some barbarian mix pots have been updated. Locating crystal trees will now add the clue message to the player's chat box. Diango now only offers prismatic versions of the skill pendants, which can be converted into any skill the player has unlocked. Antifire pots will no longer stop having an effect before they run out. Wow, really? Antifire pots will no longer stop having an effect before they run out. Seriously? Wow, that is incredibly broken. That shouldn't even be a thing. Interacting with familiars via the summoning icon will now respond as expected. Players can no longer run through the pillars of the watchtower north of Varak. Players will no longer be forced to walk a square back when standing on a specific tile north of the crop field by the Grand Exchange. Signs of the Porter now bank snakeweed when collecting from jungle vines rather than when picked up. The attuned ectoplasmator now correctly consumes a charge when equipped while killing demons and ghosts. And last but not least, we've got the old ninja fix. Ooh, the old ninja fix. The Targar Calquet entry in the player owned house cape rack has been updated. The entries have been added for the ranged and the magic versions as well. Players can now optionally choose to skull themselves via Mr. X in Edgeville. Players are now able to obtain multiple ectophiles. Players may now claim multiple agile armor parts. There is now an overlay that shows approval rating when on miscellanea. And the you don't have a target message will now only appear once per minute unfiltered. So there we go. That's pretty much everything I do believe. So there's quite a lot altogether. You've got the primary club with a bunch of free stuff if you're going to be doing that. Uh, it's cheaper than usual than buying your membership. Although if you use bonds it's not particularly going to bother you. Uh, the charity event's going on. So five bonds gets you everything you can from the Oxfam Unwrapped charity event for December. So yeah. If you've got the bonds and you don't mind donating to charity, then that's a thing. You can get uh, some nice rewards from that. Then you've got the Christmas event, which is... Well, it's Christmas event. And then all of the BTS for this month, including all the bonus XP weekends and double mini games and other things and stuff. You know what I mean? So there we go, people. That is pretty much it. So with that said, I will leave you to it. Happy Christmas, although I dare say I'll speak to you again before then, so I'll probably say it again then. Either way, happy Christmas, people, and I will catch you all later. Have a good one.